How big is your God? I ask that in all seriousness. Because I think one of the problems, be seated, folks, thank you. Because I think one of the problems in the church is that we've shrunk God. We've stuck him in a manger. We've wrap, tried to wrap our minds around him as if that's possible. We've tried to figure out how God will act, where God will be, what God wants us to do and think, and we figured it all out. In other words, God is smaller than I am, and if that's the case, then you're all in a lot of trouble. I want to tell you the story that all of you have heard me say this before, to tell this story before as an entree into the third chapter of John, because John's gospel, in John's gospel, we meet an enormous God. It is, in my humble opinion, the biggest God of the Bible. If you want the absolute incredible announcement of the grace and power and majesty of God, there is no better place to find it in John. The story is Mel Brooks' story about the tribe in Africa who used to worship a big brave named Phil. He was the largest brave in the tribe and everybody fell down and worshiped Phil until one day in the jungle there comes a lightning and thunderstorm and a crack of lightning knocked Phil dead. And Phil's laying on the ground dead and the whole tribe gathers around Phil and they're absolutely shocked that this could happen to Phil until one of the braves says, uh-oh. Somebody's bigger than Phil. Somebody is bigger than Phil. Let's meet that somebody. Turn, if you would, to the third chapter of John. Those of you who have done some reading in John's Gospel know it is a very different book a very different understanding of who Jesus is. The story that we are about to read is supposedly about Nicodemus, but as all stories in the Bible are, it's not about Nicodemus at all. It's about God. There was a man, a ruler of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, the, this man came to Jesus. Mar John wants us to know this phrase is really important, by night. One of the things about John is that there are multiple meanings for most of the things that are going on. This is, I would imagine, not only chronologic night, but this guy comes to Jesus in the dark. He leaves Jesus in the dark. Nicodemus never quite gets it, never quite sees the light, never quite comprehends the God in whose presence he finds himself. Rabbi, verse 2, we know that your teacher come from God, for nobody can do these things unless God is with them. And Jesus answers and doesn't give an answer. He proposes one of those very different, church, difficult, church-dividing words. And there are at least two meanings for the Greek word anothen in this text. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is... What does your Bible say? Mine says born anew. What does your... Born again. Anybody else have a different one? Born from above. Born from above. It's got two possible meanings. It can mean born again. From again the mother's womb. Or it can mean from being born from above. An act of God. Now, you and I know that creation is itself an act of God. But the Greek word means both of those. It can mean either going back into the mother's womb or being reborn spiritually. And the question is, which one is it? And John says, yes. That's right. It's both. And that is both the beauty and the problem with John. It is both, and it can't be one or the other when you're talking about this 15-dimensional God. 
Nicodemus sees it as one or the other, right? What does Nicodemus say? How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus sees it as born again. He's missed the whole level of born from above because he can't fathom it. How can a three-dimensional mind be expected to fathom a 15-dimensional God? That's the problem Nicodemus is running into. And I suspect it's one of our problems. Can he enter a second womb into his a month, second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answers, Truly I say to you, unless one is born of water, now does that mean baptism or does that mean the water from the mother's womb? And John's answer is, That's right. <laughs> it's both. Unless one is born of water and the Spirit from above, he cannot enter. They cannot enter. She cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I tell you, you must be born anew again from above. Here's another one of those words that's really important for John. The word is wind in verse 8. The wind blows what it will. The Greek word is panoima. It can mean wind or it can mean spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit, the wind at creation. We're going to talk about creation in a couple minutes. The wind at creation that blew across the nothingness and formed the world. The world. God's <sighs> is what this wind is about. Have you ever been in a 45 mile an hour wind? Y'all have. You can't control it. You can't get away from it. It blows where it wills. If a 45 mile an hour wind is uncontrollable, what do you think this is? <gasps> we don't have a prayer to control something like that. So is the wind spirit of God or is it wind? And John says, that's right. The wind blows where it wills and you hear the sound of it, but you don't know where it comes from or where it goes. We've tried. We've tried to suggest that I can control God by what I do. God responds to me. If I'm a good pastor, then you will love me. If I'm a good husband, then my wife will love me. If I do good grades, then I'll... Then, I mean, that's what we do, right? We try and control God. John says it's exactly the other way around. <sighs> Verse 11, truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen. Nicodemus in 9 says, I don't get it. Nicodemus is in the dark. Nicodemus can't get it. When it comes to the grace and love and mercy of Almighty God, who in this room gets it? I remember it was Fred Beekner talking about the grace of God, and he said, I'm not sure I can remember this, he said the grace of God is like trying to explain the th Einstein's theory of relativity to a bighorn sheep. Think about it. Nicodemus says, I don't get it. And God says, that's right. You don't. 